Melania Trump in just minutes. This is her first sit-down interview since that lewd 2005 tape of her husband Donald was released. You'll see that interview next. In an interview to be aired tomorrow on Fox and Friends, Melania Trump sat down with Fox's Ainsley Earhart to answer questions for the first time since that video of Donald Trump's crude comments about women came to light. Ainsley is here with a preview. Fred, a little more than 48 hours after that 2005 video came out rocking her husband's campaign, Melania Trump showed up in St. Louis to support her husband at the second presidential debate. As her husband was grilled about his crude comments in the video, many of us at home were wondering, what is Melania thinking? Well, earlier today, Melania sat down. She opened up to me for the very first time since that video, telling us about the first time she heard the video. Those words, they were offensive to me. Uh, and they were inappropriate, and he apologized to me, and I expect I accept his apology, and um, I, we are moving on. Mm -hmm. From a woman's perspective, what were your thoughts when you heard those tapes? I, this is not the man that I know. This is uh, we could see, as I always said, as my husband said as well, for a successful businessman, uh, entrepreneur entertainer to that he did so much in his life been in so many shows so many tapes um, it's very hard to run for a public office and um, he did it anyway he said I want to help American people I want to keep America safe I want to bring back jobs uh, bring back economy so our children, our future, will be the best way possible. And since that 2005 video's release, 10 other women have come forward. During our interview, I asked Melania about the accusations. I was not surprised in one way, because as I said before, everything was organized. And it, it is three weeks before the elections. Uh, all these women coming out and uh, they are allegations that they are not true. Uh, why now? Why three weeks before the election? Um, and uh, what they're accusing my husband, that is not the person that I know. What is your message to these women? What would you like to say to them? That all the allegations should be handled in a court of law and without the evidence to accuse somebody is a man or a woman it's damaging and it's unfair why do you think they would make this up then because they want to damage the presidency of my husband and it was all planned was all organized from the opposition at that second presidential debate, Donald Trump tried turning the tables, appearing with Bill Clinton's accusers just hours before. Is it fair for the media to bring up Bill Clinton's past or for Donald Trump to bring up Bill Clinton's past? Well, if they bring my past, why not? So they, they're asking for it? They're asking for it. They, they started. They started from the, from the beginning of the campaign putting my, my picture from modeling days, mm -hmm. as you want that to be your first lady. That was my modeling days, and I'm proud what I did. I worked very hard. Mainstream media, being fair with all of the coverage? No. Why? They don't check the facts. I noticed that with me since um, my husband announced story after story. Even if I say they, my answers, they don't listen to me. They would prefer to listen to somebody else who doesn't know me. Uh, that's why all the immigration story came out, as you remember. New York Post did two rows, in two, two days in a row. Um, my pictures that I took as a model, I'm very proud of my body. I'm not ashamed of my body. I'm very comfortable in my body. And before we left Trump Tower, I asked Melania about what we can expect this Wednesday. It's the last debate in Vegas. What's your advice to Donald Trump? Just to be himself. Be himself. 
Um, I know how smart he is. I know what he's capable of. And um, keep it calm, cool, focus, and um, to talk about issues that American people want to hear about. And believe it or not, that is just a small part of my conversation with Melania. There is so much more that you have to see. It'll air tomorrow morning, starting bright and early on Fox and Friends. Brett? Thanks, Ainsley. Just a reminder, Fox and Friends kicks off each morning at 6, so don't forget to tune in for that. To respond to both that Melania Trump interview and the latest Clinton emails, and the news about Mr. Trump from Mr. Trump himself, our nightly political panel is back. Guy Benson, political editor of townhall.com, and Mara Elias, a national political correspondent at National Public Radio. Well, she said, did, she, did Melania Trump, that he should be calm, cool, focused, and talk about the issues of interest to the American people. Pretty what do you think of that advice? advice? Pretty good advice from Mrs. Trump, I would say. He hasn't been following that advice. She was kind of impressive in that she interview, She was very she? impressive. I thought she was very compelling. You know, here's somebody, you know, English is certainly not her first language, right. we know that. But she made her case, and she was very poised, and I thought she did a good job. And it's too bad, because if it wasn't for that plagiarism incident, she also did a good job at the convention, and then she disappeared. She probably would have been a good asset for him if yeah, that hadn't good, happened. a good surrogate, yeah. She should have suggested that right there, yeah. didn't she? She was excellent. I mean, that is the best defense of her husband that I've seen from anyone. And with all due respect to some of these people attached to his campaign, having a bunch of older white men who've been married multiple times coming out defending Donald Trump is not nearly as impactful as what we just saw from his wife saying, that's not the man that I know. Uh, these women look at the timing. I thought that she laid out the case for why voters should overlook this and forgive him the way that she has. And then the advice that she gave to her own husband at the end was terrific. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You heard him once again say this, the stories were all made up. I think that what a lot of people may be puzzling over is whether they may believe that these these women all came out and it was coordinated. I mean, it was quite striking that four of them came out in one day, you know, hard on the heels of his having said in the debate that this never happened. And it was like two days later or three days later that this all came out from these women and the ones that have come out since. It's, I think it's quite possible to believe that this was all coordinated, planned possibly, possibly withheld for many months. I think what what the question is, whether people believe that because of that, that the statements were false. Right. I think a lot of people think the statements were not false. On the other hand, he came, he came to the debate with those Clinton accusers, which muddied the waters, and I think made it harder for him to make a pure defense of himself. Right. And no yeah. one forced Donald Trump to say on tape that he fondles and gropes women, which is what he did in 2005. And right. no one forced Donald Trump in a presidential debate to deny that he had ever followed through on those actions that he described right. of himself on tape, which sort of did create an invitation for yeah. women to, to disprove him and call him a liar, so, which no, tend out. It's like Gary Hart saying, put a tail on me. Yeah. Very quickly, we saw this segment with Catherine about the FBI agent saying that this quid pro quo was over. That's Patrick Kennedy, very close to Hillary. Any impact on the campaign from that? Quickly. You know, I think it's not good, but this Trump stuff just overwhelms everything. Yeah, videotape is powerful, isn't it? But yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty... pretty it, should, it should matter. You want to talk about rigged? Right. Hillary Clinton and that scandal and the total lack of accountability for everyone is astonishing. There you go. Guy Mara, thanks very much. Coming up, a phony, a terrorist, and a twit. That's just a few of the names I've been called. More mean tweets coming up next. Time now for another round of viewer feedback from Twitter where people can't seem to agree about me. Mr. Kev GC tweeted, quote, no one likes you, Brit the twit. Go home, dummy. Yet Cl D Cliff Devereaux tweeted, Brit, I think you're a fair journalist. I think you're the consummate professional. Stay the course. A Twitter user by the name of Sausage House said, Brit, you're a terrorist to honest journalism. But Paul Johnson tweeted, quote, for most in media, honest journalism is an oxymoron, notably the New York Times. Brit is one of the exceptions. Well, thank you, sir. But Joe Cugo said, wipe that smug smirk off your face, Brit. We know you're a phony. And finally, M. Woodley tweeted, thank you for not catching the crazy. It must be stressful for this election. Sir, you have no idea. Please keep the feedback coming. We do really like hearing from you folks. Tweet me using Brit Hume or at Brit Hume or email on the record at foxnews.com. That is about it for us tonight, but stay tuned for the O'Reilly Factor, which is next, and in which Bill will 